between chapter number 2 and chapter number 19, it was an up and down deal. And then in chapter number 23, he makes a statement of faith. And then from 23 to 37, he goes through that nine times. Those three guys each came after him nine times. And he took time to answer them each time. But thank God, when God stepped in, He changed the whole picture. In uh, chapter number 19, He made a tremendous statement of faith. He said in verse number 23, Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book that they were graven with an iron pen and led in the rock forever. For I know, look at it, for I know. In 23, chapter 23, said he knows. But in verse, in chapter number 19, but I know that my Redeemer lives. And that he's going to stand at the latter day upon the earth. Yes. And, though the, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. He said, I'm going to go to the dust. The earthworms or, the, or, or whatever are going to eat my flesh. But I know there's going to be a resurrection. And my eyes are going to see him and not another. Hallelujah. What a declaration of faith. And I want to tell somebody in the house. Will battles cease? No. Will struggles cease? No. You will have battles and you will have struggles. But when you can make a statement like that in the midst of the battle, you're going to come through. Hallelujah. I said, oh yes. When you and I can make a statement like that, praise God, it's still going to rain in the just and it's going to rain in the unjust and we're going to bury our children and we're going to bury our loved ones but God still lives and there's a resurrection morning. Hallelujah. With all
going to read it again. Thank you, Lord. But I feel a connection in the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. I'm reading it again. Oh, that my words were not written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. That they were graven with an iron pen and laid in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day. Hey, Satan. My God, my Jesus is going to be one to, the last one to stand and you're going to the pit. You're going to the pit. There's an angel got a chain in his hand. He's polishing everything and he's waiting for God to give him the word. And he's pulling those chains out every once in a while and say, God, can I do it now? God, can I do it now? Boss, can I do it now? Hallelujah. Eternal Jehovah, can I do it now? Because one chain, one angel, one angel, one angel, one angel, one angel, one angel is going to bind him, bind him, and cast him in a pit. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your God's powerful. Your God is awesome. Your God is mighty. So again, I'm repeating it. Amen. In the midst of fire, in the midst of waters of sorrow, in the midst of turmoil and strife, my I know that my Redeemer. Yes. I know that my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Oh, he's going to stand on the earth. And though the skin worms, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh. I don't really think he understood resurrection, Brother Fallon, because we're going to have a body like his glorious body. This, this body's not coming out of the grave. It's going to be a glorified body. A body that'll know no more pain. A body that'll know no more heartache. A, a body that will know no more loneliness. Hallelujah. Oh, church, be ready. I said be ready. I said be ready. I said be ready. You talk about a declaration of faith. It's here. It's in the book. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Job came under an onslaught of attack from his so-called friends. They hurled one accusation after another against him. And it appeared, as I've already said, it appeared that each spoke three times for a total of nine times. And he got a little upset and he got a little disturbed. As I said, I, I'm repeating myself because I was getting both messages run together. And, and he said, you guys be better. He said, you'd be better off. You just kept quiet. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm going to tell somebody in the house tonight. Don't listen to everything everybody's saying. That's right. mm -hmm. Don't listen to all that negatives out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I hate to think it, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> Not everybody wishes us well. I don't like to think it, but I'm going to say it. Not every Christian wishes us well. I don't like to think this thing, but I'm going to say it. Not every preacher wishes us well. But there's a God in heaven that's on our side. Hallelujah.
with me. You're preaching with me. That's excellent. Because it's not enough for me to preach it. I want the anointing of God to flow from me into this congregation. I want it to flow through every child, every teenager, every elder among us. I want us, I want us to walk out of here with our head in the air, not in an arrogant way, but in a way of victory. I said in a way of victory. I said in a way of victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, these abusive attacks took place after he had suffered the loss of all material wealth, plus his children, and finally his own health deteriorated to the point where he found himself sitting in ashes, which was another reminder of what used to be. As ashes are powdery residue, or is a powdery residue, of what used to be. I've never seen it like that, brother. It's Fallon, but he sat in ashes. They may have been the ashes of his own buildings. They may have been the ashes of his own home. And every place Job looked, it reminded him of what he did have. Oh, God. Dear God. Chapter 2, verse 7. So went Satan, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot to his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. Now the potsherd, do you know what a potsherd was or is according to one a commentator, the word used here, and he gives the Hebrew word a fragment of a broken vessel. It all reminded him, you're broke, Job. You don't own a thing. Your children are gone. You're in the ashes of what used to be. And yet I know that I went here. And yet he knows the way that I take. That's faith, hallelujah. something else to think about. That shard may have been a broken piece of pottery that once graced his table. Everything, my brother, everything to remind him of what he used to have. And boy, if this, this is the way the enemy would like to tear you and me down, especially if we, if things, if we lose some things, he'll remind us of what used to be. A friend of mine sings Faith. I need to stop and get my get it together. Faith when a loved one. Faith when a family is homesick and dead. I might not have the words exactly right. Faith when the word comes, a loved one. And they said it was an old preacher left his wife home very sick. And he was on his way to church. And when he got to the door, they said, Pastor, we just got a phone call. Your wife passed on. And that's where the words of that song came from. Faith. 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 The songwriter said, I don't need to understand. I just need to hold his hand. I don't even need to ask the reason why. For I know he will make a way through the night and through the day. I don't need to understand. I just need to keep holding his hand. And my friend, I'm sure some of you have already faced it. There will be things in life when nothing makes sense. But you keep holding on to Jesus. Oh, I'll keep holding to those nails. For I know he'll make a way through the night and through the day. So here he is. Nothing, nothing could be more strong Nothing rather could more strongly <clears throat> denote 
the greatness of the calamity than for a man of wealth, honor, and distinction to sit down in the ashes and to take a piece of broken earthenware and begin to scrape his body covered with undressed and most painful sores. It does not appear that anything was done to heal him or any kind of showing in taking care of his disease. That's what Mr. Barnes notes has to say about it. Have you ever seen an open ulcer in somebody's body? I've known that the ulcer was so putrefied. He was covered. And, and don't pass out on me. But he scraped that old bloody, gooey mess. Pray for Sister Joyce. <laughs> She is further on once 
She's further on once referred to, but even then not to her advantage. It was not a positive thing that they said about her. Why asks Chrysostom, did the devil leave him in this life? Now, I'm not against women. My mother was a woman. <laughs> and my wife is every bit a woman. And so is your mother. But he's saying, why did the devil leave him this wife? Look at this. Because he thought her a good scourge, by which to plague him more acutely than by any other means. He is saying, as far as he is concerned, she was left there to try him further. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible does speak about a, cant a cant cantankerous woman. Mm -hmm. She said a continual dropping in a rainy day is worse than her. Her husband, she's as bad as that worse than Thank God for you. I said, thank God for good. And I want to tell you tonight, we have some of the best women in the world. And I want to tell you something else. When you dress like a woman, and you look like a woman, and you talk like a woman, you act like a woman, you're a blessing to the kingdom of God. I'm going to go a little further. I haven't said it yet, but you don't need all of this external stuff. <laughs> Did I get through to you? Y'all got the picture. Painted toned nails. Chains around their ankles. Chains around their wrists. Chains around their neck. I'm messed up now, aren't I? Thank God for Holy Ghost filled women that act like it, look like it, talk like it. You're beautiful. I said you're beautiful. Amen. Come on, gentlemen. Come on, gentlemen. Come on, gentlemen. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So it looks like Mrs. Job was left there to try him a little further. It'll make sense when I'm done. Moreover, the thought is not far distant that God left her. In, to him in order that when in the glorious issue of his sufferings he receives everything doubled he might not have this thorn in the flesh also doubled. <laughs> I have a feeling that if Mrs. Job was here right now she might be in front of an firing squad. <laughs> Makes sense. The God who could have prevented these tragic events from occurring allowed Satan to make his attacks against Job without letting him know the reason why. And that's what's tough. That's what Job, Job, Job was confused. Job couldn't understand. He said, God, if you love me, how come? And you read the book of Job. Job sort of charged God in some ways. Or at least questioned God. And I'm not about to knock Job any more than I'm going to knock Peter that sunk in the water because Peter had more guts than a lot of people. At least he get out of the boat. Yeah. Give me a big smile and a big amen and say, Pastor, I'm glad it was him and not me in the boat. <laughs> because I can't float. <laughs> and without him, I can't swim. It seems to be a contest between the enemy and Jehovah. And the Lord initiated it. If you go back to the first chapter, the devil didn't challenge the Lord. He came with the sons of God and, and, and the Lord said, where you been? He said, oh, up and down, two and through. 
Now he didn't tell the real truth because the New Testament unveiled, un, uh, revealed him as the one who goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's the same old devil. He didn't change from Genesis back to the New Testament. He just thought he had himself concealed, but Jesus became his undoing. Hallelujah. I said, Jesus became his undoing. Job 1 and 8, then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He's the finest man in all the earth, a good man who fears God and will, and will have nothing to do with evil. Job 2 and 3, well, a second trip. Well, have you noticed my servant Job? The Lord asked. He is the finest man in all the earth, a good man who fears God and turns away from all evil. And he has kept his faith in me despite the fact that you persuaded me to let you harm him without any cause. But he didn't tell Job what he was going to face. You know, how many, how many remember, now this, this would have to be, in my generation, the old Laurel and Hardy movies. Well, that's a fine mess you got me into. And that's what Job could have said to the Lord, well, that's a fine mess you got me into. If, if you would have just, if you would have given me an inkling, I'd have taken it, but I'm going to tell somebody tonight, sometimes God leaves us to fight on our own. Oh, he's there. I said, he's there. He's there to watch, but there are some battles we have to fight. He has to see, he has to see us. And this is how we know that we can do it when God stands somewhere aside and just lets us fight. Because the Bible said he will not suffer you to be tempted more than what you can bear. He'll make a way. So he's the way maker. He's there. But he's going to stand in the shadows and he's going to watch you duke it out with the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Satan said this Job served God for not. He's serving you for what he gets out of you. He's serving you because you put a hedge about him. He's serving and somebody said the word hedge means angels. He said he's serving you because you got him crowded in and protected. You pull one of those angels aside. And he said, okay, I'll do it. But you're not going to touch his life. Hallelujah. Chapter number 23, I'm coming to a close in about coffee time. I go forward, but he's not there. And backward, I want you to notice this. I go forward, but he's not there. And backward, but I cannot see him. The Living Bible says, I, but I search in vain. I seek him here. I seek him there and cannot find him. But he said, I go forward and I go backward. Now listen to me. And you're doing such a good job. The only way to go forward is to release the past. I preached it, and I preached it, and I preached it. He said, I go forward. So what he's saying is, I can't seem to see him in the future, so I'm going to go back. No, no, it, it's a mess back there. It, it's a mess. It's discouraging back there. You, Some of you people have been through battles you don't ever want to go through again. Come on. Some of you have faced trials you don't ever want to face again. So don't look for it back there. It's all out here. Hallelujah. And we have to release the past. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The only way to go forward is by releasing the past. It is impossible to anticipate the future while dealing with remorse about the past. No one can keep a straight course while looking over their shoulder. I can't get my head around. Has anybody got a rubber napkin? Yeah. I can't get my head around. I was walking down the street one day when I was a little girl. I mean, when I was a little boy. And I walked right into a telephone pole. Because I was looking way over here somewhere. I wake you up. Sorry about that, Sister Velda. And the telephone pole didn't budge. 
And when I almost hit the ground, it didn't even reach down to pick me up. <laughs> you can't go forward by looking backward. You need to keep your eyes straight ahead. Whenever and wherever I minister, invariably I find myself dealing with people who have been dragging so much unnecessary baggage from pastors, misunderstandings and feelings of neglect. And I don't want to minimize the fact that these things have happened and they do affect us if we allow them to. But you can't go forward, look back. Don't ever forget that it was for this reason that Lot's wife didn't make it all the way out of sight. Genesis 19 and 26 said she looked back. Luke 17 and 32 said don't forget her. Keep your eyes on the gold. Not even on this level sometimes. Because if you want to see faults, just look long enough. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen? Amen. If, if you want to see shortcomings, come on. I invite you. Look for look long enough. But you walk. With your eyes on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Job displayed a strong faith in God when he declared that back, he declared that although he might not find God because of all the setbacks he faced in the past, he was confident of this one thing. His future was secure because the Lord knew where he was. Amen. Sometimes the past is so tangled and twisted that there is no way of unraveling it. But today is a new day. We are, and I'm feeling this. We are going to release the past and focus on the God of the future. Well, let me say this. We're going to focus on the God of the past, present, and future. Because he said, I'm the same yesterday. I'm the same today. And I will be the same tomorrow. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for that tonight? Stand with me, please. Hallelujah. Now bring your attention again this evening to Philippians. Philippians 3 and 13. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before that press. Hallelujah, Lord. Sister Joyce, do we sing, I feel like pressing my way. Do you know that song? I'm sorry? Well, it's a new season. It's a new day. <laughs> I'm on my way to heaven and I feel like pressing my way. Isn't that where you go? Hallelujah. Isn't that how it works? But they don't. Well, maybe it's a new season. It's a new day. 